there was something about the word and and sort of the frame of legacy that I just felt like there was a re, there was a, there was a resistance on my part. It didn't. It uh, I wanted to relanguage it. I think or reframe it. Or I found a frame that feels more appropriate. I think to being able to have a conversation with you around. I feel like what it's trying to get at. And yeah. Then, yeah. And I was just thinking back to what you had said before about the romance, you know, in the African American community often with legacy. And is that something that that they were that that even in suggesting this is Lion's Jaw interested in that, or is that is that part of their you know their curiosity, which is not necessarily our curiosity. Um, but I think ultimately, though, there I think there's curiosity about who, not only who we are, but like kind of what are we doing? Maybe that's it. What are we doing? Yeah. And that's that's what I want to. I yeah, love to focus on that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, because part of it for me was about, oh, these memories, and, and, and it was like, no, we're not at that point where we're going to sit back and, like, remember when, you know, at least not in that form, like, and then the idea of redux came up for me, and this mm. sort of, um, in history, and, okay, in order to keep it alive, in order to keep this material alive, we have to keep remixing it. Mm. We, um, and, and in the process, like if it gets too far off, we, we recalibrate. I mm -hmm. keep thinking about Angie and, and actually the physical things that I feel like we were doing in, in the redux, you know, in terms of, oh, yeah. of timing, the timing, had to slow down a little bit in order to kind of read where it might be going. So let's just talk about Redux for a second yeah. as uh, a way of revisiting um, not only material, but um, a manner of making, a time of making from, okay, 20, from uh, 10, over 10 years prior yeah. as, and that, that I, that, idea of looking back at that what came up out of our own interest or in some kind of archival mm -hmm. uh art artist driven archive of our practice our creative practice not so much the pieces that we've made but the practice mm -hmm. and so literally I, at least this is what i'm thinking about in history say mm -hmm. that uh of you and angie going back to your first duet which was the verge duet yeah. And um, trying to remember it, mm -hmm. and I and I still ca am, can can put myself back in the room in 2011 when we were doing this at Mershon at the Wexner in the in the big theater on the stage, and you guys were the it was the first time you were going through this, mm -hmm. and I'm videotaping you. <clears throat> while also looking myself at the video of your duet on another screen and you were moving through exchanging each other's roles just by happenstance it's like mm -hmm. am i over here who lives who that there was a there was a um a, a, it wasn't even a redo it was just like kind of really uncovering of what your memories had brought forward about this particular piece, yeah. um, that particular duet. And, and I just remember the feeling of catching you, catching the old thing that I was also watching while I was videotaping the new thing, just yeah. on my own, like kind of chasing, chasing yeah. my tail. And it was uh, talking and moving and laughing and it didn't happen like that. And, oh, remember that story. And these kind of things that were like, um, <clears throat> I mean, it was just a way of being in the rehearsal. I, I mean, I, I never, I didn't think of it as that way, as a way of making. <laughs> I thought of it as just a way of, right. of getting the material back. But I feel like there was a outside frame and it might've been Talvin a little bit too. Sure. I don't know if Talvin was there. I'm sure he was close by, yeah. yeah. 
if not that day. Of making something. Yeah. As you're talking, I'm also, um, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to dance, BB, but I'm, I feel like I'm going into gesture, like, um, there's something about the remembering, I feel like, and I want to connect with you <laughs> as you're, as you're talking about the thing. And so there's a, there's a gesturing that's happening, I think, to, to come in. And it feels less, and this is, I think about the, the mechanics of the Zoom too, you know, where, where I can see you visually and I can see you talking. Mm -hmm. But I feel um, my body is wanting to slightly untether a little bit and I can still hear your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to talk about this because between the last time that we spoke and, and tried our Zoom for that first conversation and today, Nancy has passed away. Yes. And um, Nancy Stark Smith, of course. And we had a, a really wonderful Zoom that Angie and Chris and Laura for had organized last night for, you know, just some of the folks who'd been there from the start, the, the teaching and the teachers and like Rachel List and mm -hmm. Ray Schwartz and Andrew Harwood and folks. And, and so I feel just this whole, even conversation about Redux brings up something about how even at that moment when we were in the studio in 2011, recalling, we were recalling from our present selves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that you never really go back, but you, you, if we're lucky, we have some sense of what we have, uh, gained in the interim mm -hmm. and so even in the week's interim here was a, is a reflection on like oh man um nancy and all that i learned but also just sat with her and not not being more of like a parallel player rather than a student of hers but just mm -hmm. being around that information and how that at a certain point into, into our information, along with lots of other things. Um, so, and I say this, yes, with Redux, but also just thinking about just this whole um, shift toward improvisation that happened in making a history than more so than we had ever done before mm -hmm. in making, using improvisation to capture Mm -hmm. The immediacy of something, the immediacy of that recall from the past, as well as um, the immediacy of the moment of performing that recall of the past, yeah. which is yeah. the essence of that redux, yeah. a lot of re's in there. Mm -hmm. so, so I feel, you know, just um, right now kind of caught in so many loops of, of remembering for, for really different reasons, but it's the same brain pattern, brain pan that's holding all of these, these memories and, and reflections. Um, remembering is the word, it, I'm thinking it keeps it alive. I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> remembering something I feel like keeps it alive. That feels different than telling a story about something that happened in the past. Yeah. It feels like there's a timing in, in the remembering. And even in the, when I think about the, some of the physical tactics of trying to keep the redux alive, mm -hmm. like it felt like part of it actually was forgetting, for, forgetting a pattern in my body about a way of going into something mm -hmm. or a gap. And, and then Nancy really comes up for me, just like the permission to sort of be in a gap of something in a gap of, of not knowing, uh, of not knowing. And, and I remember her saying this, you know, in that permission, it was, it was like, oh, this is the thing that you might actually be going for. <laughs> like the thing that's really scary and that, you know, and that 
you probably have trained not to do in terms of your dancer self and, yeah. and, and particularly in improvisation about what's happening next, what's happening next, awareness and, and multiple levels of things. Yeah. Like just the permission to be like, the gap is, is, is something. Mm -hmm. And I practice, I feel like I really first practiced that was with you when we were in Chicago. And we did, it was this little duet thing that we had done at oh. Lindsay. And it was, the, it was the moment at the beginning. It was the moment at the beginning. And yeah. That was the mid, mid, mid festival, a mid? Yeah, mid, yeah. yeah when they, they, took about, those, they want to put you in this, what's up with the that? older artists? <laughs> hey, on, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I'm aged. No more, no more. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah. But anyway, okay, going back to that, to the uh, Mid Festival 2016, uh -huh. I think it was, so four years ago. And the beginning of our duet, we were standing side by, we walk in and stand side by side yeah. with our, like right at the, the front of the, of the, right at somebody's knees as a matter yeah. of fact mm -hmm. um and then w wait to move forward together or mm -hmm. yeah um like twinning this. do you remember twinning do you remember mirroring do you remember shadowing maybe these were me and angie's things it, it was in redux and it was uh -huh. there were these formations that kind of kept emerging <laughs> as we would practice it, the twinning, the shadowing, the mirroring, mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. they were. I remember this one most. Yeah. Or, or this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then perpendicular, yeah, perpendicular. Oh, well, perpendicular, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there was, there's an image of, of you facing out and Angie is a little bit behind you. Yeah. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of that, that sort of shadow thing, the perpendicular, or where somebody gets to go out and the other one is like the, the, the a witness, observer, instigator, or something yeah. that has to do with, yeah, with that person who is free to face out, yeah. face the world. Um, Maybe it was- I love how- Go ahead. Well, okay, nothing. I'm gonna turn that off. Um, I'm, I, I love, the, and this is nothing new about dance, but how we find names for things mm -hmm. so that we can find them again. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's a reliance not only on the body, but also, you know, our, our mindset and our intellect and, and memory and, and just, <laughs> as well as all these hand gestures of mm -hmm. the kinds of, kinds of relationships. And they are kinds of relationships not just of facings, but it's like, yes. there's so much inferred when you're facing each other uh, as opposed to both facing forward or, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's when it, it's, I'm, I was trying to remember cause I thought you had brought this up, but maybe Angie and I had, had noticed those structures. Uh -huh. And I feel like the thing that you kept directing towards, and for me, it's, it's more than just like you say, uh, a structure it feels like a phys it, it feels like a philosophical principle yeah of perpendicularity yeah and i can go up and down the level of cell to bone to body to brain to the culture in the room like it's something that i feel like when i'm in the room with you and you're directing i'm trying to organize in terms of that I'm making choices in terms of that. Sometimes sure. I'm hitting the mark, sometimes I'm missing it. When I miss the mark, usually I'm like, um, maybe that choice will go yeah. there. Um, so it feels like something, and I appreciate that because it feels really organizing, like it, in the midst of trying to make something with all the information that might be coming at a, a particular problem we're trying to solve, like I'd be like, what would be the perpendicular choice? <laughs> you know what I mean? In terms of, yeah. 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 It's funny. It, it brings me to something about 
um, how we, how we carry our our varying awarenesses of, of our body when we are in that dance mode or or making mode and uh, uh, just a, a cataloging kind of a, almost um, you know an accompanying mind mind frame of what what is happening mm -hmm. and putting putting like oh uh, if not definitions but say the experience of my right my right arm and hand has a particular tensile quality that my my left does not and so there is a negotiation or or an arrangement between two different fields of f-e-e-l's as well as f-i-e-l-d-s of yeah. energy and form yeah. and that it is the interplay of all of these different densities of body and thought and action and mm -hmm. release one against another that um i think is is for me so much more potent than the shape of things but just an indication that the perpendicularity is not only of a, of a focal point of view but it's within our own bodies like the the thrust and and response and release um that gets exchanged so i love this stuff i really do i love that i love seeing uh what we've, you know, how I love seeing us in action. Mm -hmm. I, I loved being in the room, um, uh, uh, kind of noticing what it is you're doing and trying to just get in the way enough to to redirect it mm -hmm. toward something. I don't even not and the the the, mm -hmm. the redirection kept on evolving rather than saying like head toward this thing. Mm -hmm. But I but I love that. Um, that emergence of possibilities that that you guys feel were feeling and that I am I was following as well and kind of coming at it on a slight diagonal if not perpendicular yeah I'm thinking about my dad now I'm jumping <laughs> no jump yeah um I'm thinking about um he would have a word he would call it maybe pluralism like just in, in terms of the possibility that multiple um, theories or ideas can live sort of next to each other, but not necessarily blend, that they can, they can have their own integrity. Yeah. And um, I feel like one of the things I, I, I felt with training with you is that ability to put that in my body. Mm. You know, that my that this part of my body can be doing something where something, another part of my body can be, can, can be in conversation with it without having to sort of even the thing out. Yeah, yeah. And I can feel where you direct when it starts to even out and you, and you, you, yeah, you, yeah. you complexify it, you, you, you make yeah. it. Yeah. And, as a performer, it's like when, when that point after a certain amount of years, it's like, oh, that's not, I can register as that as frustration. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah. have this thing that I'm doing where I'm performing or I can register in that, that as, oh, it's reopening the moment of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that and you're I, keep doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was something I remember, this was years ago uh, with, with Ralph, and I think even before you worked with him, this was oh, some class I observed or heard. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think I was, ever took his class. We were in the same place, and I was listening to him talk to other students, and um, he said about, like, don't seduce yourself. And there was something that was just like, yeah. I mean, no, like, I love this zone moment that I get to be the dancer I love to be. And it's like, yeah, but what else is on the other side of that? Doesn't mean that you don't love it, but it's just that there is, um, hmm, there's more than just loving ourselves in this. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, as much as we love the process of it, but there's more than, there's more to find out. Um, 
Wait, yeah. Hmm. I want to. I want to look at this. Oops, that close it. There was an email you sent. No, mm -hmm. um, um, about improvisation. Remember, mm -hmm. you just yeah. sent it. I'm um, going to find it. I'm going to find it. Was it your? There were two things. I sent one that was about just in terms of the. It was in terms of the technology or the. Um, it was from. Oh, it's about the Redux, Redo, Redux chat. Mm -hmm. uh, an aspect of improvisation is actually the shuffle. Yeah. Where did you find that? It's not, is it? That was in, um, I think that was on the Motion Bank thing. And actually, oh. Oh, the Motion Bank thing. The Motion Bank thing is really great. I feel like it's it. Good. Yeah. I, Years later, now I'm like, oh, yeah, that was yeah. really good. Uh -huh. like there's, there's language in there. <laughs> Check this yeah. out. I love this. Um, and so the redux structure for improvisation is a way to consciously access embodied history or memory, memory by recalling a, a set dance, it could be a set talk uh, performed in the past, and referencing it to create a new one. These are some strategies we had around it. And I don't remember these, but I mean, I remember doing these, but I don't remember us talking about them. Quoting and resequencing choreographed actions. I love that we're quoting, like it's, it, there feels like there's a shelf life in a quote as opposed to like a sentence or something. Mm, mm -hmm. a bit. Transposing the action and time, space, shape, body part. Changing roles, which we talked about sort of. Mm, mm -hmm. um, recalling the choreographed timing and sequence, but not the exact action. <laughs> yeah. Offering beginnings or endings of actions, waiting and finding new solutions. I have a thought about endings I wanted to talk to you about. Mm. Echoing the quality of touch from the past in a new action. Echoing the quality of touch in the, in the past, of the, from the past in a new action. I, my question, my, uh, my question, my curiosity was, can you talk those things out? I mean, can, can the mouth and mind Redux in the same way the body might redux was. Um... So you mean, can I talk about those things now? I can practice it in my body. I know I have these skills to practice it in my body in terms of dance. I'm curious if, if, if those transferable skills can be put in me talking about times of um, past, if you give me a moment mm -hmm. for a second to research this mm -hmm. um, as I do it. Because um, it feels a little bit underneath and the structure of it might not be discernible for somebody watching right now. Mm -hmm. But I think you might get it. An oblique strategy. Not the first, not the second, not the third, but the fourth way of coming at something. Mm -hmm. I think you might get it. Mm -hmm. Somebody from the outside might not. And it's not literal. They're bits and quotes and pieces of things mm -hmm. of a shared history. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, I don't know if people can get that. I think that's what we practiced in our bodies, but dance is abstract enough, I think, where it can fit into that. Well, it depends on what getting it is. Is, yeah. it, is it the aim to have people go like, oh, I know you're referring, you're referring to this other dance and it's an oblique strategy. And mm -hmm. I think, that's what that's a lot maybe to ask for and I say that in retrospect after we have done a history when <laughs> it was all about referring to all these things that people were like I don't know what you're referring to but I like this other thing that came out of it I'd yeah. like to see know that you were trying to refer to something even if I don't know what you're what that was I got it and I and 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 then you know as a choreo choreographically I 
kind of ask myself, well, what did I expect them to get beyond whatever is being presented right then? However, I believe in the subtext of our interest mm -hmm. is being generating enough of a of a container yeah. to hold interest. Yeah. It's not that they have to under understand like come and be there where we were 10 years ago. You know, that's not possible. Yeah. Um, but our, <laughs> our search for that was interesting enough to try to form enough of a way to, to um, or enough entry points for someone to check in with, um, I don't know. I mean, I, it's so funny that piece was, we were working on it 10 years ago. We started working on it 10 years ago, pretty much now. Yeah. And um, what I've always loved about beginning a process is that, oh, it's like almost the first steps in whatever studio you happen to be working for and like the fall of your feet on the, on the ground signifies so much about the, here we're heading and here we are and how you might be looking at things and and your and your perspective and the sharpening of it or the what seems off or the other distractions that are coming into the room yeah. at that moment mm -hmm. and that that is so exciting to just the, the start of that um and i you know I think that there was, there's a lot in our, um, our reach with this interest in the archive um, in trying to, to place our practice as something that people can enter into the practice, not to find the piece, but to find the kinds of involvements that we, we lived with and that takes, you know, it takes them off in a different direction. I mean, yeah. yeah. I wrote a larger tribe. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean by that? Go ahead. What? <laughs> um, when you were talking about a history, I was like, oh, what is it if the tribe was large? Like, like oh. when I think of tribe, I think about like, we say this to each other and we cultivate this thing and and that makes us us right yeah that, that keeps us together yeah and like if we like particularly the first thing i thought about was it the right platform mm. was performance was theatrical proscenium stage the right platform to share tribe and and as i think about some of the other projects in terms of choreographic thinking and I think wow that totally shares tribe and mm -hmm. and shares tribe in a way of like of like this is the thinking that's going into the thing like yeah. you can watch this thing maybe you can try it on your own maybe you can try it in your own body which is diff a different frame than this is the thing to present to you and that we take you along with and that we give you enough clues to understand it so right I yeah, it's a, a larger tribe. I mean, I think about archiving too. Like, you know, some of the things that have been coming up in terms of, will people use it? Is this going to be this thing that sits, you know, in, you know, in a library somewhere? Is or is it something to create that gives an appetite? Yeah, for people to to want to go deeper inside of it. It's funny. I think that um, in terms of the appetite, we are building appetites. Um, and if not only for our practice, just the idea of a chain to follow back toward mm -hmm. uh, a work, forward toward another kind of work, and that there are multiple chains going on at this moment. And that, okay, and we are in the middle of, of COVID, and so many of us are, are attached to this two-dimensional live form of, of conversation where um, uh, 
it's setting its own kind of archive. All the recordings that are going on about like what we've said and how we trace those are putting us all, I think, in 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 range of a of a of a collecting device or collecting mindset, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, almost all we can do is reflect because <laughs> we can't move together. All we can do is you know, kind of find and remember the ways that we did do, mm -hmm. that we did do this. So um, I think, and that was one of the, I mean, okay, just introducing the vault of the project vault, rather than we can describe it at another time, rather than go into it right now. But it's, a, it's also kind of seeing all these other initiatives that are going on that are about like, how do we capture um, anything about, um, about process and, and product. I think of Giselle's project, No Boundaries, and all those solos of African-American choreographers that she learned in her body. Mm -hmm. And then I think of Ann Carlson, who had a a one-on-one -on -one performance with Margie Jenkins where Anne learned her soul, her own solos to show to, to Margie. And it was like, I remember hearing about this over 10 years ago. And that was just like, that was an archive. She in the body archive. Think of the work that Echo does about place and remembrance. And I'm, oh, this is it's kind of thrilling. Um, but I, and I think it also, but it also does speak to a common thread that many people are going through about like, how do we, how, what are the, these tools that we have now that can help us capture what has really been foundational beyond the product, beyond the da -da, performance. So yeah, yeah, there's that. I watched the um, I watched a little bit of the thing we made last time with this thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I think your your idea was that we be like this, both on the same thing. Yeah. But there was something happening with, and I think this is just the Zoom where, when one would speak, then they'd be highlighted, and then the other would speak. Yeah. And I was like, oh wow, this feels like visual rhythm. This feels like. Remember that exercise we did where one person would turn and then the other Oh, would... yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. We were, and, and I think it was around that time when you started working with ACAD. Yeah, it was at ACAD. Yeah. yeah. And Advanced Computing Center for the Arts and Design, Ohio State University. Got thank you. <laughs> the thing I got from that was that, that trajectory, and even now, was it wasn't about the fancy things that the technology could do. It felt like there was this point where it was like, oh, the technology can capture our humanity in really clear ways. Yeah. Like, it can remove yeah. a lot yeah. of the, it, it, can, it, it can get to an essence maybe of like a tedness, of a ted, seeing just yeah. these balls move in terms right. of, and just thinking, oh, that, that looks like Ted, that yeah, right. holding something of him. And so I feel like that's something, again, a philosophy that's, I've kind of held in terms of, of, of a way of engaging with technology in terms of what can it reveal around our humanity. Well, if you remember all of this, that, that, that exercise, um, what I was looking for was trying to strip away a mu as much of the performance of action mm -hmm. to see like, well, what are we, what are we doing really? Mm -hmm. And I was looking for um, uh, just other kinds of strategies to, to use to make that show up. And Scott Della Hunter had said, something about cellular cellular automata automata mm -hmm. something about um setting up these kinds of strategies and one of them was and so this one was depending on your facing 
on what happens next to the person next to you, you either turn around or come forward, depending on what they were doing. So you would have in a string of people, all of this fairly, um, there's a system behind it, but it was a little, you, you couldn't quite tell what the system was. Mm -hmm. And so we tried that. And then because we are really good at that, we got really good at like, okay, I got this. I'm, yeah, I'm turning around, I'm performing my turn around. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so then the, the, the task was I stood on either side or somebody stood on either side and gave you either um, what was um, asked you about a, an NPR headline or news headline on one side and then the other side like a movie movie trivia question. So you had to, you were thinking and, and hesitating and like, yeah, I got this, no. I, so the, the action of turning Mm -hmm. became not like flip, 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 but just like, no, no, I, do I know that answer? Is that that? So it became this whole varied thing. And then Vita, Veritina Blackburn, um, animated that into a little village of houses that kind of oh, yeah. had this, that little motion that was like, so, kind of human, humane of these little houses going like, yep, like, no, no, no. Oh, okay. On a hillside, a little village that looked like Greece. I don't know. It was, uh -huh. no, I think, yes, we weren't looking for the pizzazz of, 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 um, of a visual, you know, um, animation, but we were looking at like, what, what are we, what is the nature of our humanity and our movement and how do we unpack that? And how does Tedness become what is Tedness? What is the fall of his weight on the floor? Mm -hmm. How does he move? And how does all these things about the weight at weight at risk came from that moment, uh -huh. that time? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm. I was really. A, a, it was so interesting to have at our disposal. Uh, a whole toolkit of of digital practices that I I had no I didn't even really have much interest in it before we started and then it's like whoa this can tell me something about how we move yeah. and yeah for me it's it, it's like an it it feels like an archive at, in a point where um, it mm. feels like there are materials that, um, and almost dramaturgical, like somebody was in the room sort yeah. of watching what we do and, and, and they're artists and they're thinking about how can we visualize this within a digital platform? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I feel like now is actually a time when I'm particularly like teaching, like how, one of the main questions I ask myself sometimes is, how do, how would I, how would I prepare my students to be in the room with BD? <laughs> like what, you, you know, are we gonna do plies? No, like what are the things that would get them in the room in a way to be able to be productive, generative performance artists? And a lot of the digital materials I feel like get get there like i feel like they can do it on their own time hey joe pie no that's wilson oh where's joe pie wilson. oh i thought that was joe pie no wilson wilson, wilson looks so small i guess it's because he's just right in the corner he's right there and he also says it it's dinner time and i said like dinner no, time? no it's not oh. he's, he's a half an hour early okay but it's hard to tell him that so it's hard to, yeah yeah anyway but back to but yeah Oh, anyways, uh, I was thinking, yeah, what are the, these, these things, these things that we did that, you know, I had kind of collected dust sometimes on the shelf because I felt like I was, what felt more important was being in the room with you and making things, hmm. you know, like that they're actually really helpful materials and, and getting into maybe a way of thinking, um, a, a way of, of moving that's, re, that's slightly refracted from my own body so they're not just mm -hmm. imitating me but they're seeing mm -hmm. 
sort of multiple mm -hmm. examples? Kathleen was on this call last night. Kathleen Hermstor? Hermstor, oh. yeah, yeah. And it was just like, oh, my heart, my heart. Oh, God. And so um, I, I felt so grateful to see her and hear her. Yes. And just, you know, she said something so beautiful about how she had been counting on, on because both she and, and Nancy had cancer, she was just counting on Nancy to show her the way, how to, you know, how to deal with this and how to move forward. And, and um, oh man, yeah. Yeah, and you know, uh, I think, I, yeah, I think she has in some ways. Yeah, she has, she yeah, has. I think she has. Rachel Boja said something up and I, um, and I, you know, I quoted her back to her on, uh, in the call, but I wrote it down that she just did not expect to have her, have Nancy taken out of, out of her future, out of, you know, just, she's just taken out of her future, out of Rachel's future. Yeah. There's no, there's no other Nancy-ness that's going to happen. Yeah. And that it's, it's just not here. So, so it was so wonderful to hear what all these things and so much more than I knew about her besides knowing her, you know, mm -hmm. and um, David, David Dorfman was the one who, who did say like, and the eyeshadow, the purple <laughs> eyeshadow. <laughs> yeah. The uh, ponytail, the ponytail. Yeah, the braid. Oh my God, that braid, that must have weighed like seven pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway.